First of all, I just want to say thank everyone for coming here. And I want to thank each one of you for everyone, everything you've done for us. Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> My name is Yuval Yusef Klein. I'm Jewish, Russian, and Israeli from Haifa. I'm 17 and I participated in Friends Forever's in the National Leadership Program in the summer of 2017. As part of the partnership between Novik High School and Sister of Nazareth High School. I speak three languages, Hebrew, Russian, and English. I'm not speaking or using English in my everyday life, and me being here, giving you a speech in my third language, is a huge challenge I overcome. So I wrote this speech in Hebrew, translated it into Russian, and then to English. And soon I will ask Jessica to translate it to Northern Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> After I finished the program, I stayed engaged and became an alumni, because I was passionate about the mission of the organization. Therefore, I am active in the Israel alumni movement and have led two seminars for the 2018 and 2019 Israeli teams participating in the program. The participant seminar, which is also called the team building seminar, is the first interaction the participants have with the alumni. Although the seminar is tough and very challenging, this did not stop me from ordering pizza at midnight when I was a participant. Don't learn from me. <laughs> I also helped plan an alumni seminar, which was by the alumni for the alumni. Alumni seminars are two-day seminars led and planned only by alumni from all the years, from 2008, which is our first year of program in Israel, till the last cycle of participants, coming all together, sharing stories, leading workshops, creating friendships, and feeling like one big family, when everyone on the same level, regardless of age difference. This past summer, I was fortunate to come back at the 2019 Robert Rage Fellow. And as an alumni trainer, led five teams from Israel and from Northern Ireland, here in our campus in New Hampshire, and as well in our base in Bloomington, Illinois. As part of me coming back here in the summer as an alumni trainer, I stayed at Riverwood in Exeter, which is an elderly facility, while staying there with my best Northern Irish friend, Clay Ann, who's also an alumni trainer. What a coincidence. <laughs> we created a fitness workshop and facilitated it to the residents working on all their body muscles and their brain functionality. Both me and Clayton are interested in fitness and working with the residents made us go out of our comfort zone and think outside the box. I'm used to a very different experience with my grandma in her, her and early home. Back home, there are many cases of violence against residents in their early homes. And most of the people working in elderly homes are not enjoying their job. So staying at Riverwood was an eye-opening experience for me. I could really see both the residents and the staff always with a smile on their face. And staying there made me realize that elderly homes doesn't have to be a negative thing. This fall, I'm back again as an alumni trainer to lead our team who is currently here from Northern Ireland, Belfast. While participating in the program, I first experienced mindfulness and meditation, which was led by alumni to us. So as part of all the many skills I've gained from the part of being part of Friends Forever Leadership Program, I've researched about mindfulness and meditation. And now I'm feeling comfortable facilitating mindfulness with different objectives to our young participants, and I'm using it every single day in my everyday life. So my family, came to Israel in the early 90s from Odessa, Ukraine. My two grandfathers and my father served in the Soviet army, and my grandfather fought against the Nazis in World War II at the age of 16. So I come from a very right-sided politically family. I truly understand why my family is right-sided. I know my family has a survival instinct. After seeing their closest family members getting shot or burned alive in the Holocaust, or getting discriminated in their hometown in Ukraine. Those experiences made them 
be against everyone they might feel threatened by. And coming here as a participant made my family raise an eyebrow. Even though I live in a mixed neighborhood where 90% of the people who live there are Arab and only 10% are Jewish, I still didn't interact with people who I used to see as my enemies. You can imagine that my family was afraid that me being a part of Friends Forever's leadership program meant that I would have to change my political views extremely going against them. But after me coming back, I was a bridge between my family perspective and my perspective. As part of the alumni meetings and the alumni seminars in Israel, I met a Palestinian guy from Nazareth named Ali, who was 19 years old. And Ali became a really good friend of mine, and we now meet at least once a month, and I consider him one of my best friends, and I'm very proud of calling him my brother. Ali is the first Palestinian to come to my house. It was a really big thing for my family, and my family openly accepted Ali, and this proved not only the impact the program had on me, but also on my family. So at the age of 16, like every Jewish Israeli kid, I was called to first call tests for the army, where they test your physical health with a doctor and give you a health profile, while also having a long talk with a psychotechnical tester, combined with an IQ test to get a score from 41 to 56. This March, I'm joining the Israeli army, the IDF, to an infantry position in a more elite unit than in the brigade as part of the mandatory service Jewish Israeli kids had to do. I feel proud and ready to join the army because I'm aiming to get into an officer position so I can affect soldiers and citizens from both sides with my perspectives and leadership skills I've gained from this program. When I look back to when I was a participant, I have realized how much Friends Forever has developed. And in the near future, I envision myself and Ali leading groups of young participants from Israel, flying and having programs in our youth center in Anwag or Belize, and groups of young participants from the United States and from Northern Ireland coming to Israel and having a program there. Also, I see alumni teams from all around the world coming together in a big alumni seminar as the, as the true family we are, down in the center in Belize. So back in Haifa, my community gym is a unique gym. You can see men and women, kids and adults, Christian and Muslim, Arab Israelis, Ethiopian Jews, Eastern Ethiopian Jews, Northern African Jews, Palestinian, religious and non-religious people, police officers, businessmen, teachers, and people from all positions and classes of society working out together and helping each other with no boundaries. So after returning to Israel, after my fellowship in the summer, I was training in my local gym. When suddenly I noticed a friend's forever bottle. Knowing all, and it wasn't mine. <laughs> Knowing all the people in my gym, I was really surprised to see a friend's forever bottle. I started reaching to each one of them and started asking who the bottle belongs to. Turns out, the bottle belongs to a sister of a young Palestinian participant that was in Illinois this summer that I worked with. You can look at my gym as a microcosm of the Israeli society. Seeing Friends Forever's bottle in my gym can be resembled to Friends Forever values and messages passed on from participants to their families. So passing on values and skills I've gained as being a part of the organization over to my family and friends was my biggest mission since I came back to Israel as a participant. The story about a bottle of the young participant in my gym, the sister of the young participant in my gym, connects to my far future goal, which is slowly seeing different people from different cultures in different positions, for example, army, hospitals, politics, affecting different people by using the leadership skills and mindset they have gained from Friends Forever's leadership program, and passing those skills forward into other people who would then pass it on to other people. And then, slowly and quietly, we will have a world full of good leaders. And after seeing the change with my family, I know that if we could change my family's perspective, we can change the whole world. Thank you. <laughs>